Shocking Secrets of Wild West Saloons You Won't Believe If you've seen any cowboy movie, a fairly common genre in U.S. cinema, you're likely familiar with the image of a saloon. This was the term used to refer to the taverns where cowboys, miners, soldiers, and outlaws gathered to entertain themselves, drink liquor, and sometimes engage in duels. Saloons, as a derivation of Salon, were a fundamental symbol of life in the Old West during the period of American expansion westward. This time was characterized by a lack of laws, ongoing conflicts with indigenous tribes, and the establishment of the first American settlements. However, beyond the glamorous and adventurous vision that Hollywood portrays of the Wild West, life during that era was filled with experiences that we would today consider quite strange. So in this video we will share some of the craziest curiosities about the iconic saloons of the Wild West. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications to stay updated with our content. Origins and Structure of Saloons Many saloons in the beginning didn't even have walls. While we now have a classic image of these rustic taverns with swinging doors and wooden columns, the first saloons were improvised. In most cases they were simple tent structures where travelers could sit, rest, and mingle with others. These places often served as venues for making deals and conducting trade. The first saloon to truly bear this name was located in Brahms Hall, near the border between Wyoming and Utah, and it opened in 1822. Many fur traders would gather within its walls. The Gold Rush and its Impact The Gold Rush was one of the main reasons for the expansion of saloons. These places began to gain importance and grow as a sector as settlements developed in the Midwest. Many of these towns thrived due to nearby gold mines. When a mine was close by, the population would increase significantly, and more workers and miners sought rest and entertainment in the taverns. It is estimated that in Santa Barbara, California, 30 successful saloons were established once the gold rush began in nearby mines. In Livingston, Montana, 33 saloons opened to serve a population of around 3,000 people. Alcohol, the main product. As is the case with modern bars, the primary entertainment in saloons was alcohol. The atmosphere in the tavern was one of celebration and festivity, although there were also more somber and serious saloons. At that time, alcohol didn't have the variety or sophistication that we know today. Most drinks were made with burnt sugar, pure alcohol, and tobacco leaves. There were cocktail-type drinks with curious names like tarantula juice, Taos lightning, red eye, coffin varnish, etc. Generally, the alcohol was unrefined and unfiltered, and many preparations included tobacco and even gunpowder. The most well-known drink was fire water, which contained pure alcohol, the closest thing to what we now know as whiskey. Its name originated from the first contacts with indigenous peoples who saw alcohol as something very strong, especially when served over a flame. Violence and competition in saloons. Saloons were also sites of violence and competition among men. A man's reputation was defined by his demeanor and behavior in the tavern. When a man entered the saloon his decisions could destroy his image, land him in trouble or enhance his legend. These places were the perfect stage to demonstrate masculinity, whether by defending one's honor, commanding respect, or showing an ability to handle liquor. Fights over these tests of manhood were more common than we might imagine. Strategies to attract customers while alcohol was the main draw, saloon owners offered other forms of entertainment to keep customers longer and ensure they spent more money. Gambling was one of these strategies. Many saloons had poker tables and encouraged visitors to bet while they drank. During the 19th century, electric refrigeration did not exist, making it difficult to keep drinks cold. Most liquor was served at room temperature, forcing customers to drink quickly to avoid their drinks warming up. However, by the late 1880s, saloons began to access refrigeration and offer cold drinks, attracting many new customers eager to refresh themselves. Women in the Wild West Saloons Women played a fundamental role in the saloons. Another of the most attractive forms of entertainment was music, and many taverns hired young women to dance, sing, and entertain customers with conversation and attention. These girls broke with the conventions of the time, which inclined towards assigning a traditional, familial, and domestic role to women. The women in the saloons wore corsets that hugged their bodies, elaborate and elegant clothing, and were often very beautiful. 
Although it is often assumed that all offered amorous favors, the truth is that most had a role of festive entertainment. Their goal was to distract men and ensure they had a good time so they would stay longer and spend more money. While the men entertained themselves and bought them drinks, the women only received colored water or a simple tea, ensuring they never lost their sobriety while customers increasingly lost control over their spending. The girls earned a commission based on the number of drinks they were bought and had a weekly salary. Many were widows unable to support themselves without their husbands or daughters of working-class families from the fields. Dancing was often the only way they could earn sufficient money. Racial and Ethnic Diversity in Saloons Saloons were not very diverse spaces racially and ethnically. Most of these places only welcomed white patrons, and people of other races were unwelcome. By law, Native Americans were prohibited from entering taverns and mingling with others. Even among whites, soldiers were not well received in saloons, which were designed for adventurers or those who in some way were on the run. In general, it was customary to communicate only by first names in saloons, as many were fleeing or interested in hiding their identity. Lawmen from the eastern part of the country were looked down upon and considered strangers. Women of family backgrounds were also prohibited from entering, as their presence in places of alcohol and gambling was not accepted. Ownership of Saloons Ironically, many taverns were owned by notorious outlaws who grew their fortunes thanks to the popularity of these establishments. Well-known names from the Wild West like Wyatt Earp, Bat Masterson, Holiday, Wild Bill, and Young Thompson were among the notorious outlaws who managed saloons in various towns and cities. Epidemics and Diseases in Saloons as expected in the 19th century, a time with few hygiene and sanitation measures, especially regarding health, saloons became hotspots for epidemics and diseases. Epidemics were common and repetitive situations, and venereal diseases were particularly prevalent, given the few options and scant information on prevention. The main treatment for infections like syphilis and gonorrhea had not yet been invented, and the treatments of the time included ingredients that today seem absurd and dangerous like mercury and arsenic. Doors of the saloons One curious fact about saloons is that most did not have swinging doors. While we now consider them iconic, in reality, most taverns didn't even have the swinging doors that appear in all the movies and representations of the Old West. This type of door, known as bar doors or cafe doors, is not very useful as an entrance for any establishment. It made more sense for saloons to have regular doors with locks, which offered more protection and security while helping to conceal from curious onlookers what was happening inside. Some taverns did use swinging doors, but usually behind regular doors. Cultural Importance of Saloons Saloons were a fundamental part of American culture and history. They were the most common gathering place and the largest cultural symbol of the Wild West, marking the foundation of a rural working society in the midst of constructing and expanding the territories we now know as the United States. Their influence remains in American cinema and folklore, and much of their cultural legacy continues to this day. The modern bar is a derivation of these saloons, with more current music and far fewer weapons. Bars continue to be common entertainment venues, where adults from different social backgrounds share, play, and gamble. They are also places where unknown fugitives and deserters seek to distract themselves while maintaining their privacy. That's all for now. If you want to support the channel, consider getting a membership. You can see the available options by clicking the join button below this video. Your support is optional, but greatly appreciated. Until next time, I wish you an excellent day.